Tonight on the readout. I literally looked at him. I saw the, the, the smoke leaving the, the gun and I literally watched bodies drop. I literally was frozen. I just stood there. I like, I literally could be dead right now. It didn't kick in until I looked at my coworker and she was bleeding out of her neck. The violent society where any one of us could be the next victim of a mass shooting while right-wing politicians refuse to do anything about it. Plus, what we're learning about the Colorado shooting suspect from his neighbors and his social media accounts, how he managed to obscure a very troubled past. Also tonight, Mike Pence refused to talk to the January 6th committee about Trump's insurrection, which could have gotten the vice, former vice president killed. Well, now there's new reporting tonight that the DOJ wants to talk to Pence and that he just might do it. But we begin tonight with Thanksgiving, the day we gather with friends and family to enjoy turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, and pumpkin pie. We throw on the game, catch up on our lives, and then discuss, or quite possibly argue, about religion and politics. For millions of Americans, it's a day of cherished traditions. And as Americans, we certainly value those traditions. But it's also important to unpack the myth of Thanksgiving. It is a holiday riddled with historical inaccuracies, built on this myth that the indigenous welcomed their colonizers with open arms and ears of corn, a simplistic fairy tale interpretation of a 1621 encounter between indigenous tribes and English settlers that erases the genocide that followed. It's the truth Republicans want banned from our textbooks, because here's the secret they want so desperately to keep. We are a country founded on violence. Our birth was violent. In 1619, a ship with more than 20 enslaved Africans landed in Virginia, ushering in two centuries of American slavery that left millions in chains or dead. And when those humans in bondage were finally free, a terrorist organization that was a card-carrying member of polite society, the Ku Klux Klan, picked up where the Civil War ended, using violence to maintain white supremacy. The Klan and its ilk are still active. And as Americans, we continue to choose violence. We are a country that chooses violence over and over again. There is no facet of American society that is untouched by it, as all the recent headlines remind us. But human violence is not just American, it is global. While we're preparing for Thanksgiving, rockets rain down on Kyiv and several other Ukrainian cities, knocking out power and water. At least three people were killed in Russian airstrikes today, including a 17-year-old girl, less than 24 hours after officials said a newborn was killed by missiles that hit a maternity hospital. Our country is thankfully not being invaded by a foreign power, as is Ukraine. But it is not engaged in a, and it's not engaged in a civil war like in Yemen. And yet, our people are facing the same types of weapons that these people are facing in war a semi-automatic weapon barely different from the weapon soldiers are using in Ukraine can appear anywhere. Republicans made sure of that. So on any day, at any moment, you can get shot and killed at a supermarket or at a mall, at a hospital, at your workplace, at a cemetery, at a nightclub or a concert, at a movie theater, a parade, a birthday party, even among the most sacred of spaces, a synagogue or a church, and at far, far too many schools. In 2022, there have been more than 600 mass shootings in the U.S. The bodies aren't even buried before the next one takes place. Today, a Colorado judge ordered the suspect accused of gunning down five people at an LGBTQ nightclub held without, had him held without bond. It was the defendant's first court appearance. Then we woke this morning to news of another mass shooting, this time at a Walmart in Virginia, by a manager who opened fire on his fellow employees, killing six people this time with a pistol, a ah, variety. It is the second high profile mass shooting in four days. We now know the names of the victims. They are Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, and Tynika Johnson. The sixth victim is a 16 year old resident of Chesapeake whose name is being withheld due to him being a minor. Let's also name the three college students killed last week during a shooting in the same state at the University of Virginia. They are Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis, and Deshaun Perry. How much more bloodshed will we tolerate? How much longer will we cower in fear, looking over our shoulders whenever we're out of our homes? How much longer, and now look closely, how much longer must our children endure active shooter drills 
in elementary school. How many more empty seats at Thanksgiving dinner? There is a way to fix it, quite possibly end it. But instead, we are trapped in a cycle of gun violence. It feels permanent because an extreme minority that has infiltrated Congress loves guns more than they love people. Whether it's their beloved AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle, the favorite weapon of mass shooters, including the shooter in Colorado, or the pistol like the one used in Walmart. We are stuck in this loop because America continues, no, insists on choosing violence. Violence that makes history's biggest global colonizer, the United Kingdom, blush, as British journalist Gary Young explains. I lived in America for 12 years. I very rarely felt the threat of being beaten up, but I often felt the threat of being shot dead. In Britain, I never feel the threat of being shot dead, even if I do occasionally feel the threat of being beaten up, and I know which one I'd rather do. Joining me now from Chesapeake, Virginia, is NBC News correspondent Cal Perry. Also joining me, Jason Johnson, professor of journalism at Morgan State University and host of the podcast A Word with Jason Johnson, along with Chris Brown, president of the Brady campaign. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Cal, I do want to start with you. Um, what do we know about this shooting in Virginia? at the Walmart. So we know it happened at 1045, excuse me, sorry, 1015 last night, uh, 45 minutes before the Walmart closed. You can see where I'm standing right now, the parking lot completely shut down. But how many times have you rushed to a Walmart, to a store just before closing, just before a holiday uh, to get those last items? That's the way that this store was last night. It was packed just before closing. Uh, a 31 year old man who's worked here for 10 years walked into the store with a pistol and a few clips and shot dead six people, three, including himself, in inside one of those employee break rooms. Somebody else, an employee, died at the front entrance. Three other employees managed to make it alive out of the Walmart, uh, but died in nearby hospitals. We now know that all of those that were killed worked at this Walmart, and we know the shooter who took his own life was a manager. Now, police are continuing to comb through the scene behind me. They want to get all the forensic evidence they can, uh, but of course, it's quite possible <laughs> that there will not be um, any kind of legal action here, because of course, the gunman is dead. I, I just I, I want to address sort of your overall point, though, um, which is about where we are as a country, because I spent the day here outside this Walmart reporting all day. Um, and one of the things that I was struck by uh, was members of my crew uh, witnessing people walk through here with their sidearms openly because this is an open carry state. Earlier this morning, not far from here at a Target, there was a false alarm of another shooting. Uh, police descended on that store. Um, and, and look, it, it's made everybody wonder, especially me, um, what do you do if you're a town that's on edge and you see somebody with a gun in an open carry state? Um, there's really nothing that you can do. It, it, it sort of confuses the situation even further. For a town that is on edge, for all all the reasons that I said, um, it just seems to be a complicating factor. Now, in Virginia, there are certain towns and certain cities where you cannot openly carry, but you can here. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if we hear from more state senators, because we've heard from some today who are talking about shifting this legislation. But I don't need to tell you, we often hear that in the aftermath of these attacks. Uh, and then it wanes, Joy. This is why I'm afraid to shop in Virginia, to be honest with you. It's an open carry state. People walk around with guns. And we know that we've seen a case in Ohio where a man was buying a toy gun in a Walmart and wound up getting shot dead by police because in that open carry state, this black man was considered too dangerous to be holding a toy. Uh, I want to talk to you, Chris Brown, about this, because the governor of Virginia issued a statement. They do it all the time, these Republican governors. Thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers. Well, there's an editorial that pointed out in, Mo in Mother Jones. He didn't use the word gun. Like, he left that word completely out. And I just want to show you how his lieutenant governor ran with him when she was on his ticket. Her name is Winsome Sears. Here was the ad. We're going to put it up. This is a picture of it. That's how they ran. They basically, the, the whole idea was book bans and guns. So your thoughts on his thoughts and prayers. Well, look, I mean, that is completely counter to what the vast majority of Virginians, and I also, Joy, am a Virginian, uh, want and need from our state. We're coming up, actually, next, this, this next year, in 2023, we will have another election in Virginia. And I think and I hope that gun violence prevention is on the ballot, because before we had this governor, we had a governor who actually 
ran and won on the issue of gun violence prevention, and we accomplished what everyone in Virginia said was impossible. We passed six laws to really change the demographic, change the nature of uh, gun violence prevention in the state of Virginia. Youngkin ran and won, not on this platform per se, but he is beholden to the gun industry. So what he and the legislature in Virginia want to do is actually roll back all of that. And to your point, it's a very, very dangerous and scary place to be if you don't feel that you're shopping, you're going to church, you're dropping your kids at school, and there are basic safety measures in place that can protect you. It's not just why we need change in Virginia. It's why we need this Senate in the lame duck session, Joy, to pass the assault weapons ban that passed the House and the background check expansion that are both pending in the Senate. They need to take that, that up, both of those bills, and that will save lives. Maybe not yeah. the, these particular mass shootings, but a lot more. And some of what we just heard about, people would be saved.